Hey, today we're going to go over anonymous and identified events in PostHog. We're going to go over what these two different kind of events are in PostHog, when to use them, how to know which one is the best for your use case, and also show you how to implement each one and show you all the different things you can do in PostHog with them. Let's start with identified events. Identified events enable you to track specific users over multiple sessions, devices, and platforms. They're the most powerful kind of events PostHog offers. Uh, in identified events, we create a person profile for each user. This enables you to set user properties for, for the user. So for example, the date they first signed up or what kind of pricing plan they purchased. Identified events are best for web or mobile apps, especially once a user is already logged in. Now let's talk about anonymous events. Anonymous events are more limiting with what you can do with them in PostHog, but they're much cheaper than identified events. With anonymous events, we don't create a person profile for the users and instead do session-based tracking. This means that you can't track a specific user over multiple platforms or devices, and you also cannot set uh, user properties for them. Anonymous events are best for marketing website, blogs, or B2C apps where uh, there is lots of many users and your users don't sign up, don't sign up or log in. Under our current pricing, anonymous events can be up to four times cheaper than identified ones. So we recommend to use anonymous event to start with anonymous events and to move on to identified ones when you need to. So let's talk about what you can and cannot do with anonymous events. With anonymous events, you can still set you can still set properties on the events. So, for example, um, what country the user logged in from, or what browser they're using. Um, and in PostDoc, you can also aggregate and filter events by these event properties. So again, you can filter events by um, users from a specific country, or uh, what is their which UTM source they came from. You can still create trends, funnels. SQL insights and more. Now let's talk about what you cannot what you cannot do with with anonymous events. With anonymous events, you cannot set person properties, and this means that you cannot use any of the other post hog features that depend on person properties. So, for example, you cannot create cohorts with anonymous events. For this, you'll need identified events. You also cannot use uh, anonymous events for targeting feature flags, A/B tests, or surveys. If this all sounds confusing, don't worry. We're gonna walk you through a demo now where we show you how to implement both anonymous and identified events and show you all the different things you can do with them in PostHog. For this video, I've created a simple SOMP project. This project has a, a welcome screen with a simple click me button that does nothing, a sign in button here, which takes you to a login screen. User can log in. And once you log in, you take into a simple dashboard. Now, for this project, I've already set up PostHog. So if we go into our PostHog Activity Explorer, we'll see that events are being captured from this uh, project. Now let's get into let's get into capturing identified or anonymous events. When you initialize PostHog on the client, there is an optional parameter here called Person Profiles. What this what this parameter does is determines whether PostHog should capture identified events, anonymous events, or both, depending on the circumstance. If you get, if you pass in the always argument to this to this parameter, PostHog will always capture identified events. If you pass in never, PostHog will never capture identified events, and will always capture anonymous events. Or if you pass in identified only. PostHog will capture anonymous events by default and then only capture identified events when you tell it to. Now, we recommend most projects to use identified only as this gives you the most flexibility. For this project, I've also used identified only and I haven't yet added any code to tell PostHog to capture identified events. So all events are anonymous by default. Let's see what this looks like in the PostHog dashboard. 
If I go to my activity tab to view the events and I try to click in on a person uh, using this person column, a message will pop up, pop up telling me that there is no profile associated with this ID. This is because for anonymous events, we don't create person profiles. We only create person profiles for identified ones. Again, this means we can we can still create insights and trends and funnels for these events, but we cannot use cohorts for these events, or we cannot um, target feature flags based on user properties for, from these events. Let's see now how, how we could capture identified events. To capture identified events, you call any functions which, which sets person properties in PostHog. So for example, these are functions like identify or alias or group or set person properties or set person properties for flags. Uh, what, what this does is that this will create a person property, a person profile for the user, which then enables identified events to be captured. Once you've created a profile for this person, any events going forward in future are automatically captured as identified. Let's show you what this looks like in practice. So I'm gonna to go to the sign in page. And here when the user signs in, I'm going to call postog.identify. Uh, now remember that for the identify function, you should pass in a distinct ID. And for this case, I'm going to use the user's email as a distinct ID. If I save my changes and go back to my sample app and sign in, uh, you'll see that um, events are, start, are going to start being created as, uh, as identified events. Let's reload the page a few times to generate events. And if we go back to our activity tab now, we'll see that we've started capturing events here um, with our identified user's email. And so we no longer have the anonymous ID here. If we now click into this person, what we'll see is that instead of giving showing us a message that there is no person profile, since we do have a person profile for this now, we now can actually click in and see the full person's details in PostHog. And this includes events, recordings, any cohorts there's a part of, and you can, for example, now create a cohort with this user.